let's try to find the surface area of uh, the portion above the xy plane, the intersection of these two things. This thing's gonna be a sphere, and that thing's gonna be a cylinder. We can kind of imagine this, if we were to draw this, I'll draw the cylinder first. Um, we're gonna get x squared plus y squared equals six y. That means if I plug x into this equation as zero, zero, then I would get y equals six, somewhere over there. And zero, zero would get me zero on both sides. We'll get something like that. And let me try to rewrite this a little bit better so that we could figure out where the center is. x squared plus y squared minus six y equals zero. And then we're going to go y squared minus 6y. I'll go ahead and add 9 to this and then subtract 9. So we're completing the square here. And then, uh, so we'll have y minus 3 squared. We'll move the mine to the other side. And then here I'll actually put x minus 0 squared. So that way we can see that the center is just 0, 3. 0, 3. There's the center. And if the radius is 3, then we know that we're going to get a cylinder kind of like over here. This is going to go all the way up to the z-axis and what it's going to do is going to encounter a sphere. Now this sphere actually has a, a radius of six so it's going to end here actually and then it's going to extend all the way to here and then all the way to here. The rest doesn't really matter too much because it's essentially just going to it's going to make something like this and this is going to extend upwards and then what we're going to see is on the side, we're gonna kind of see something like like this. Um, this. This is more of the X and Y planes here. Dot those, like that. But essentially, you're essentially just gonna get a little small section of this, uh, of this sphere, kind of like that. This is in the air. It's like a cylinder here. And then the sphere is going up like that. We only see this little piece. We're trying to find the surface area of that. <laughs> um, so what's next? Now we need to remember what the formula for the surface area is. And that's just gonna be ds equals the square root of one plus fx squared plus fy squared. And we're gonna try to figure out what the fx and fy are. We're going to refer back to this equation. So we're going to rewrite this as z squared equals 36 minus x squared minus y squared. Square root of everything on that side. That way we get the function of x and y. Get rid of the z thing. And um, now we can take our df, our, 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 our derivatives. Um, well, um, if we wanted to uh, uh, take the derivative of that, we would have to go like uh, 36 minus x squared minus y squared. This is to the one half. Um, we're basically going to say, okay, this is one half, 36 minus x squared minus y squared to the negative one half. And then we're going to multiply it by the negative 2x that's inside of there. So what we'll get out of this is that the f of x is equal to negative 2x divided by 2 times 36 minus x squared minus y squared to the 1 half over there. Get rid of those 2s. And we're left with this. And we'll also see that fy is going to be really similar. Similar, I'll put it right underneath. fy equals negative y over 36 minus x squared minus y squared to the 1 half. Now we have our two derivatives. We'll go ahead and plug that into here. We'll get ds equals the square root of one, and don't forget the dx dy over here, but um, one plus fx squared, we square that, we'll just get x squared divided by, we just get rid of the square root on the bottom. So we'll have 36 plus x, no, it's minus x squared, minus y squared. Minus x squared, minus y squared. On the other thing, we're also gonna have the plus y squared, divided by 36 minus x squared minus y squared. Let's even multiply this one by 36 minus x squared and blah, blah, blah. And we'll sort of put it all under one thing. So we'll get 36 uh, minus, minus x squared minus y squared on top, divided by 36 minus x squared minus y squared 
on everything. And then we're going to add these two. So plus y squared plus x squared and stuff like that. These things are just going to go away. And we're going to be left with um, a big square root. And then over all this, it's ds. Let's see if we can rewrite this one more time. So we got ds equals square root of 36 divided by 36 minus x squared minus y squared. And we even have our dx and dy. So now I've got this new expression here. And uh, let's recall these shapes over here that we were looking at. But I see that we have the x squared and y squared there. We're going to turn this into polar coordinates. Now x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So I can rewrite this saying that ds equals, I'll pull this thing out and make it a 6. And then in here, I'm just going to say 36 minus r squared. And I'll make this a negative 1 half right there. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then over here, this is the dA, and we're going to make it r dr d theta. <laughs> okay, good stuff. So now, let's try to figure out where the thetas are. It's going to go from, like, this angle here, which would technically be 0 r, but we're going to start there at 0 degrees, and then we're going to go all the way to the left over here. That's going to be, you know, 180 degrees. So that way we get this entire broad range of all these different positions in there. Um, that's fine. So that's going to be 0 to pi. So we'll set up a new a double integral here. We're going to go 0 to pi. And then we've got 0 for the radius, but we'll figure out where the radius goes to as well. Let's make some replacements for x and y in this formula here. We'll have uh, x equals cosine or r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. And then we can plug that in there. So we'll get r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta equals 6r sine theta. Now we'll go ahead and divide out. Uh, we'll get this r squared times 1 equals 6r sine theta. Divide out these r's and we get r equals 6 sine theta. Now, we know that that is the maximum radius, so 0 to 6 sine theta. Nice. Okay, let's plug in this formula. I'll even pull the 6 out of everything. And I'll just say 36 minus r squared to the negative 1 half r dr d theta. So now, um, let's try to evaluate this. Uh, it's pretty easy because our r is on the outside. So we can kind of say r 36 minus r squared. This is supposed to be a negative 1 half. Um, but uh, if I want to integrate this, then I'll have to add 1. So we'll make that a half. And then I can divide this by the 2 on top, 1 on the bottom. And then we'll also divide it by negative 2r. And then um, so, so like this will just go away. And when we're left with a uh, 0 to 6 sine of theta, so we're in here. Um, so the answer is going to be negative uh, 36 uh, minus 36 sine squared theta. And this is going to be in a square root. And then we have a minus. Another negative, um, and this is going to be just well, in parentheses here, 36, so one half. So technically, we're just adding 6 here. And over here, we're basically saying a negative, I'll pull out the 6 from the square root, so we'll go negative 6, 1 minus sine squared theta in the square root. Keeping in mind, we also have a 6 out here in terms of the integral. And then we're also going to d theta next. So we're close to getting this. Um, let's pull these 6s all the way out. So we've got 36, 0 to pi. And let's recall that if we have 1 minus sine squared, well, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, 1 minus sine squared equals the cosine squared. So we're going to do that. And of course, square root of the cosine squared equals cosine. So technically, we just have a negative 
cosine plus one. Theta here, and d theta. If we integrate this, we'll just basically get theta and then minus sine theta. And this is going from zero to pi, 36. Um, sine of zero and sine of pi are zero, so all we get is 36 pi at the end. Um, that should be the surface here.